Hey folks, I thought I'd do a video just kind of talking about some of the games that I'm playing at the moment um, because it is time for me to do a video and I can't really be bothered to play anything <laughs> so I like talking and uh, yeah I'm, I'm kind of a bit too tired to play so what I thought I'd do is yeah just just kind of talk about a couple of the games that I've played and my, my thoughts on them um, this game here if you're not aware is a grand strategy game the kind of 4x grand strategy hybrid called Terra Invicta it's made by the developers of Long War Mod, which I admit I never played because I don't really like Firaxis XCOM very much anymore, um, and the idea of making it longer just did not appeal to me at all. Uh, I understand that though, it's not just a mod to make it longer, it was much more... People say it was great, and uh, I'm willing to believe it. Uh, I just don't like the base game enough to really play a mod on it. But uh, Terra Victor is... This is a weird game, right? Um, it's very, very slow. I've probably play, been playing this for about four hours, and um, yeah, I've I don't know what I'm doing to be honest. And I'm, I'm I feel this is kind of like a game like Shadow Empire, where I don't want to be learning how to play it from other people. I want to figure it out for myself because I feel that there's a lot going on here. Um, what I will say is though, I mean, there's there's like so much going on because it's a real geopolitical simulator, and there's you know it all these different countries are modelled. I don't I just don't know to what level they're modeled and I can't help but feel right that there's a lot of numbers going on which is basically what video games are right but there's a lot of numbers going on the kind of crunch you know numbers being crunched and things looking like they're happening but I kind of I don't know I kind of get the impression that it might look deeper than it is and I feel that that's a really ignorant thing for me to say but having only played it for about four or five hours um, so I, I really want to kind of get into this game. The thing is, it's just not grabbed me, and I don't know why. I think it's because it is partly partly because it's so slow, partly because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like I've, here, here's me. I've I've started taking over everywhere in in South America, as, aside from Brazil, because I, I I started off with a character with this Brazilian character. I can't remember where she is now. Um, yeah, it's this one here. So this this Marianne Gaspar, she's a politician. She started in Brazil, and I thought, okay, right, well, maybe I'll get, make a play for Brazil. But obviously, trying to get these control points in Brazil is actually quite difficult um, at the start of the game. But they've got a reasonable GDP, right? So I thought, well, I'm going to start getting these kind of uh, places like Argentina, Bolivia, and um, whatever this one is, Paraguay. Sorry to anybody who's from this nation. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I just my geography is not very good. So. Um, you know, I've, so I've, I'm like, okay, right, maybe if I kind of take these areas around here, kind of bring them all into line, militarize them, then maybe I can kind of invade it or something. I don't know. I just, I've watched a few people play it a little bit, but I don't, like I said, I don't really want them to, I don't want too many spoilers. I find, I found that, um, this is funny as well as a YouTuber to say this, but I think if you overwatch stuff on YouTube before you've really played it yourself, it can really ruin it. And I found that with Total War Warhammer Immortal Empires, to be honest. Like, I've not really played that very much actually recently because I kind of watched so much content on it before <laughs> before it came out that I feel like I've played it to death. And um, so, yeah, I I don't know. I don't want to watch too much on it at the same time. I just feel that the game is... It doesn't really explain to you what you're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, it's like, get the control points. Okay, how? Um, well, you, you know, you get the people to go and do stuff and then... You, I don't know. I, just, I, I don't really understand it, and I don't. I don't think it's a particularly difficult game to understand. I think it's just one of those you've got to figure out what's going on, because uh, without a manual or somebody you know who's experienced telling you how to play, which I don't really want, to be honest, because you know for the aforementioned reason. And I kind of, I think that it's a bit, a bit odd. I think the game struggles to actually tell you what's going on and what you're supposed to be doing. The tutorial in it's not bad kind of gives you a, you know a rough idea but there is so many things going on here like all these you know you've got the the likes of the people public opinion you've got a military each nation's got a military which apparently you can invade with all this stuff like monthly investment funding and i just i don't know i can't help but feel that there's a lot of detail here and, and is half of it used I don't know. I've no idea. The game doesn't really tell you. So it's um it's one that I need to spend more time with but I don't know. I don't I don't feel like it's interesting enough to really grab me yet and I think part of the reason is not so much of the game. It's just that I'm, there's there's better games that I'm playing at the moment. So yeah, that is that's Terra Invicta. I I'm a, I'm a little bit too this right. I I'm playing Emperor um, 
Emperor of the Fading Suns as well at the moment, which has just had a re-release. I'm going to put that on in a minute. But um, that game has really taken up my time. And I think if I hadn't got so into Emperor of the Fading Suns, which I'm really enjoying, I probably would have given this more of a go. Um, and I, I kind of feel like I've missed the boat on being, you know, one of the first people to really get into it. Not that I really care about things like that, but like, for example, Shadow Empire. There was only there was only really me, Daz Tactic, and Tortuga Power, and a couple of other small YouTubers that were kind of really playing it. Um, so, you know, I've, I was kind of striking out as one of the pioneers in that game. And um, I know Tortuga's playing this quite a lot. Uh, he, he told me that he likes it, but... Uh, I, I feel like I've kind of missed the boat on that now and uh, there are other YouTubers who are really kind of like exploring this and doing well. Rob from Explorminate loves it by the way, he's really into it and I'm surprised by that because Rob uh, doesn't usually like very long slow games. He's usually, you know, he likes stuff that he can play quickly really because he's, cause he's busy, he's a busy guy. Um, so I'm, I'm busy now though, That's a, this is the thing and I'm busy, I've probably got more time to play games than Rob has because Rob's got li like a family and like little kids and stuff and and I don't, fortunately, I don't have any kids yet. So I have a little bit more time, right? But uh, I don't know, it's just not grabbed me. And I want it to. And I'm willing to believe that it's good because the developers have got a good credentials, you know. Because Long War is very, very well respected. And I'm, I am impressed that they've... I mean, look, this is... Uh, where's the nation list? This is another thing. I've only played it a couple of times, so I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> Nations, there we go. So they've actually they've actually put in like pretty much every nation on the planet. I, I wouldn't be surprised if like all of the countries on the planet are in here. But certainly, I mean, like they've got all the they've got all these the, all the Istans from uh, Eastern Europe and that all the like really small Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. There, obviously, you know, it's considered to be that all of these you know tiny countries are really important in the game. I mean, how many video games do you know have got Laos in it? <laughs> uh, or Kyrgyzstan or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting game and I kind of I kind of want to get into it. But maybe you guys can tell me, what how do you, if you've been playing this, how do you get into it? Do you just need to keep playing it and just sort of learn from your mistakes? Because, I mean, I'm up for that. I, I, I'm just not up for it at the moment because I've got games that I think are more fun at the moment that I really want to play and I'm not really in the mood. I'm kind of tired after work. I don't really want to be learning some crazy complex strategy game. I've already I've already done the Shadow Empire thing and kind of, you know, stumbled through a big complex game, you know, without any help already. So I kind of feel that, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for another one yet. But I, I'm definitely keeping my eye on this game because this game does look really, really good. Okay, and this is the game that, one of the games that I've been playing a lot recently in the last week or so since the release of empire emperor of the fading suns enhanced i'm uh, i'm just going to turn this music down to touch hold on it's a little bit loud okay so yeah this game is it's a 25 year old game it's been a, it's been out a long time and um they had a 25th kind of birthday release where they uh where the developers holistic design actually went in and they changed, uh, they, they kind of just brought it up to speed, fixed a load of bugs, um, put a little bit more detail into some of the systems, and it's just basically a better game. Um, I'm really, really, really enjoying this game at the moment. I think it's amazing. What is it? It is a space and terrestrial 4x game mixed together, and uh, you, you actually have multiple planets, so there's actually a galaxy map look, the purple ones are mine. And I, I, as the Lee Halan, I start on Kish, uh, and I've expanded out to this planet here: Rampart, Malignatus, Mag, uh, Malignatius, and Criticorum. And I'm actually currently invading uh, one of the other players on Severus, their home planet here. So this is um, it's a really, really fascinating 4x game because you've basically got these maps. Okay, uh, this is Kish, my home planet, which I've really started to build out into a big metropolis. Um, with you know all this industry there's many different resources and they're all useful they were all the resources are actually physically stored as items as well in your in the areas that they're created so uh, let me find something where i know where there'll be some sitting around probably looking at one of the trace places doing trace okay maybe not well anyway um just take my word for it that there are actually goods that are sat around here we go look these are the these are the goods so so for example we've got different types of cargo 
and you've got raw materials that you can mine and then you can actually use certain factories to create them into new things so you can build units um, so there's uh, you can, there's spaceships you can build uh, from starports but you can also build ground units as well so there's a ground warfare game and there's also a, a space combat game space combat's quite simplistic at least in the way that it's presented because the planets are all joined up by nodes and then you've got a certain amount of you know ships that can be in a certain area um, or a certain amount of fleets I should say but it's got some really really interesting mechanics for a start there are five main factions and you pick one of these and these are the players who are kind of vying for control of the galaxy to become the emperor but then you've got like three other factions as well and uh, there's there's more than that actually but you've got the league who are like a trading league and these guys have got their own agenda once they've accumulated like you buy you can buy resources from them and take loans out from them and stuff and they've also got votes um which I'll talk about in a minute, but basically, once they've got a certain amount of war chests, they will actually kind of, they've got the option to kind of go and actually attack the rest of the players and declare themselves. Um, they, I, th I can't remember what they call it now, but there's they declare like a new republic or some kind of new political system, and then they just go on a crusade and attack everybody. So it's really it's a really interesting mechanic because at the start of the game, you're kind of reliant on them, and all like if you see all these purple cities yeah these are all different cities all specialized for different things but you see this one here this is an agora and this is the uh, the, the trading league's planet oh sorry uh, they're they're kind of uh market on on each home world there's one of these and probably on uh some of the the ones that you've lost contact with too and you can actually go to these guys and you can buy you know it's like a market where you can buy places uh, buy materials that you need and you will need things like food and energy and all sorts of stuff at the start but the more you buy from them the more you rely on them the more you're filling their coffers so eventually when they get a certain I, mean, I think we're quite close actually I think about uh, 30 300,000 to up to 500,000 I think it is then they, they can start attacking so uh, you've got to be careful not to give them too much money because it, once you do you you actually empower them to be able to to kill you <laughs> There's, then you've got the church the, this game is very very heavily based around religious sex and the church that but every unit and city in the game has a religious sect and there's like one two three four five six seven eight of them and then there's the vow as well which is like an alien race and some of your people can worship them and these guys really want to get as much influence and power as possible as well and they've got this goal that they want you to sign the holy writ and the, the holy writ basically means that anybody who becomes emperor if they sign the holy writ it means that the empire they basically the, the church have got them more control in fact they technically they own you really so you know you're kind of more like a puppet emperor so you lose a big amount of points and there, there's a scoring system in this game as is as was common in strategy games in the 90s which i really like by the way i like scoring systems i wish they'd not disappeared um i know people find them a bit archaic and kind of you know what is this space invaders but no i, I like i like i love it in master of magic for example anyway so you've got the church as well and you can there's all sorts of diplomacy you can do you can ask these guys to uh, prescribe certain technology so if you like say okay well my enemy is using plague bombs you can go to the and the plague bombs are horrible you can go to the church and say right I'm gonna give you uh, you know if you if you prescribe plague bombs I'm gonna give you uh, or I'll sign the holy writ so that means you know I will, I will give you this power over me if I become Emperor and they're probably going to they're, they'll do this definitely because they are desperate to get the holy writ over you um so you probably wouldn't do that you might just give them a big load of money now i'm not sure how much the money the church would long but like let's say we gave them a large amount of money they, and what they would do then they would they would make this a prescribed technology and anybody that they found because they, they patrol around with their own ships anybody that they find so let's say that they they came to my labs and they, they somehow managed to get a map of my home planet either i was stupid enough to give it to myself or one of my you know rivals managed to get a map of this and then they traded it the the church could turn up and they can scan your archives and they go right you've got plague bombs that's been prescribed and then they'll just attack you with this huge amount of tr troops so you've got these kind of factions there's the vow as well i don't really know what these guys do i think there might be the, the, the manual doesn't spoil it basically at the moment all you can do is you can they, they're interested in map information right you can sell them a map like i don't know like a, let's say i'll sell them the one for Kid, uh, cadavius and they're like no we've got no use for your map of cadavius be gone i i expect that they, they're also a threat um also there's also a alien kind of invasion going on you can see them here this is like an alien fleet and 
the um, the the kind of empire of or the former empire or the great houses, whatever you want to call it, they are they have a garrison here on Stigmata, and this is this is basically like a core system. All of these planets here, like Absolution, has been taken by the aliens, right? These symbiotes are called, and we've got a big garrison here that's constantly fighting them back. And um, this is a this is something that is that is a kind of a post, I guess, like an uh, like a post that's given to one of the houses. So I've been I've been actually voted in Imperial Regent, which means that I was able to to uh, tell the other factions, you know, okay, well, you can you can have control of the Stigmata garrison to hold back the forces. I gave the Hazat the Imperial Eye, which let's just have a look at this uh, my home planet so we've got this fort here there's always an, imp an imperial fort on every home world of the great houses where they've got a garrison and they just basically can keep an eye on you right um now i gave that to the uh to the to the hazard so to catherine and then i uh, i gave the other one to saladin i think because he's he's basically been kind of an ally and i've actually allied with this guy and the other one is the um the imperial fleet i think Let me just go to yeah, we've got the Imperial Fleet. I've got that. Uh, Hazard, I've got the the Stigmata Garrison. That was it. And then the Imperial, I went to the, uh, these guys. These are the Hazard, sorry. And these are the Al-Malik. So, yeah, you can kind of like... You play these political games. So you can say, all right. For example, the Imperial Fleet is a big, big fleet of ships. And at the beginning of the game, you don't have anything like it yourself. And it's stationed at Byzantium 2. Um, and there's another garrison here, I think. Uh, where are we? It's Cadiz here. Now, this is the Imperial Fleet that I'm currently controlling. It's got a bunch of ships. I've lost a few as well because I've been bombarding Severus with it. But basically, um, you can use this. This is supposed to be used for defense of the, you know, of the Empire, of the, of the the whole Empire. So I'm really supposed to be fighting these guys. But I'm just using it to attack my enemies. So if you can wrangle yourself into a position where you've got either you're the Regent and you can give yourself one of these things or you can, you know, you could say to Al Malik, okay, at the next election, I'm going to give you all of my votes and you are going to, I'll make you the regent. And in return, I want you to make me the Imperial Fleet leader. If you don't think that you can manage it yourself, you could, you know, you could say, okay, well, Al Malik looks like he might be able to, you know, get more votes. So you can kind of wrangle yourself into a position of extreme power at the start of the game. And I've done that and I've, I've kind of like... I've done that because I've got a lot of money, so I've just been buying people off and buying their votes, and they desperately need the money. Actually, I've got this game set on the easiest setting because I'm just playing it for the first time. So yeah, this is a really, really cool game. It's way more interesting than any other Forex game I've played in a long time, apart from Shadow Empire, really. I've, it's it's different to Shadow Empire. It's got combat that's very similar. The combat is, you know, you, you, throw top, you throw stacks of units against one another, just like you do in Shadow Empire. And it resolves very much in Sh like Shadow Empire. The only difference, and it's quite complex as well. The only difference is, th there isn't very detailed feedback on what's going on. That's my only complaint about the combat in the game. But otherwise, it's very good. And I know it looks like, you, you've got these big maps. I mean, these maps are pretty, a decent size, right? And you'll see that when we go to, um, if we look at Severus here, I've actually invaded one of the home worlds of you know one of the planets like you, of one of the other nations sorry uh this is the what are they called the uh, i forgot what they're called now uh it's giving me the name of the leader i can't remember what they're called now but anyway these guys <laughs> the green ones i've actually uh, i managed to get a foothold and I've, I've and i've got i've got in here and i've actually taken all this off them i've actually built a few more forts so i've got this foothold on their planet and they're throwing waves and after waves of big armies at me now to try to dislodge me this game's cool by the way because it's got aircraft it's got naval forces it's got spaceships it's got infantry um the stuff you can build is crazy as well like so look you can build like destroyers like naval carriers transports uh then you've got like planetary defense weapons You've got loads of different tanks, like multiple different types of tanks. They all do different things. Uh, there's there's like a bunch of roles basically, but you've got hover tanks, you've got tank killers, which are like tank destroyers in Shadow Empire, uh, anti-air stuff, salt guns, gunships, dive bombers, you know, uh, strategic bombers. You've got all this stuff, all these toys to play with. And then if you look at the forts where we can build infantry, there's loads of technology. So we can build things like spies and assassins, which can attack um you know kind of stealthily we've got these doppelgangers which is like this kind of like shape-shifting kind of male female thing uh we've got special forces 
cybernetic troops look. Um, we've got these kind of like spe like spacefaring space marines, like powered armor stuff, rangers, alien war beasts that you can create using certain technologies if it's not been prescribed. These crazy genetic warriors, salt legions, chemical shop. There's all this mad stuff, right? Basically, these guys went to town with the game design of this. Uh, it's absolutely mad, and it's it's just so exciting the stuff that you can do in it. The fact that you can actually steal resources from enemies as well, like these, you've got these, uh, this is Exotica, it's one of the resources, right? I've actually taken this from the enemy, so I went in and raided one of their places, one of their farms, took it over, and then I, moved, I shipped all the stuff back. So I've got like a whole load of stuff now. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really interesting game. You can play it with a setting as well, where if you want to build something on one planet, you need to actually get the resources there to do it. So you can, uh, the AI doesn't use that, unfortunately. So yeah, it kind of just makes the game more difficult for you, for you, but it does work in multiplayer. So you can do like supply raids and that kind of thing. Very, very interesting. You can still do supply raids in this, by the way, like, you know, without that setting on. For example, you know, let's say one of their farms is sat around with some stuff in it. You can just go and attack it, land a ship next to it, like an orbital ship, attack it with your marines, take it, and then uh, transfer all the all the goodies into your ships and then take them away again before they react with a big ship you know with a big stack of uh of units the ai seems much more uh, seems more competent now as well in this they uh, apparently they're going to redo it but at least as it is it it provides a good you know it provides a decent enough challenge for you to to have fun it's not gonna it's not the best ai i've ever seen like the way it will make it will form armies though and throw the like large stacks at you and it it's aggressive like the game will pick where you're weak as well and sneak in and take you know what uh cities that aren't well defended so yeah I'm, I'm in love with this game it's amazing um it's well documented the ui is good it's a bit of an old ui and it's got a bit of an odd some sort of interesting unusual button combinations like right click is select and left click moves which is anathema to people who've got this kind of rts system ingrained that we've got now because everything seems to use the old the old rts system of left click select right click move but this is opposite um once you get your head around that it's absolutely fine um there is tons and tons of stuff in this game it's really really big and complex and the fact that it's built around an rpg um, gives it some really interesting design decisions. Like I said, you've got these kind of like NPC factions that have their own agenda. Um, the way that the game is won is you want you you get yourself voted in as regent, which is what I've just done, and then you can declare yourself as the emperor, and then you've got to kind of fight off the other factions, and uh, you have to win the vote. Basically. You have to get voted in as the emperor, I think, or you, either that or you declare it, and you just have to survive a certain amount of time. I can't remember quite how it works, but anyway. The way that you uh, the voting works is everybody starts the game with five of these things and the scepters. These are the voting scepters, and you all, uh, each one gives you one vote. And each of the factions, including the NPC factions, not the Val, but the all of these. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. There's thirty of these staffs of these scepters, and you can trade with you can trade for them. Um, you can. I think you can like, I think you can trade the scepters. I'm not seeing any options to give me. I'm, I might be able to say, you know, <laughs> look at this. Uh, gi give me money, and I can say I want all your twenty credits. That's all you've got. Now. Otherwise, I'll unleash the plague. <laughs> Bless you, the gifts of Nurgle. I can make you regret it. There's, there's like all sorts of different, listen, little different diplomatic options. Um, but yeah, I think like so you can say I want I want you to give me your votes at the next election. Then you can offer them like stuff, and then they'll they'll vote for you. Um, when you're the regent, they'll be a bit reluctant to do that. Uh, so yeah, you've got these you've got these scepters, and what? Okay, so what my plan here here is with the um, these guys. I can't forget what they're called now. <laughs> they've got some kind of parasitic name, if I remember right. Anyway, um, I, I'm hoping to actually raid them. I'm going to try and take over this planet, take all their stuff. When I found out where it is that their main palace is, I think it might be here. Uh, that looks like a good candidate because it looks like, oh, maybe here. Anyway, I'm going to find where their scepters are and I'm going to raid it and I'm going to take them. And then that gives me 10 votes. If I can keep, take all of their scepters and let them move some off planet, uh, with a little bit of luck, I will move from having one sixth of the scepters in the game to having one third. And that gives me a controlling, you know, 
I'm basically going to be able to vote myself in every single time unless these guys gang up against me. So it really changes the game. It's a fantastic, in interesting victory condition. And like I said, apparently you can trade for them, but uh, you can, you can like, they can be destroyed, I think, if they're lost on ships. So if you're transferring scepters on a ship and they get destroyed, you can lose those scepters. So that's the only way they can be destroyed. Um, so you, it, there's just warfare on multiple sides. There's unexplored planets that you that you go and colonize like at the start of the game you really just start with kish and then you've got a small force on byzantium which is the the old seat of the emperor emperor but you can't fight on this planet yet um war's forbidden you can only fight with um, spy units so yeah uh, this game is is i'm just enjoying it so much like just going out exploring the planets finding the resources that i need and there's like Rampart here. This is a planet that I just colonized right from scratch. There was a no, not quite from scratch. I think there was there was already a yeah, there was already a palace on it. I actually had to take this, so I landed in um, in some distant places. Took a few took a few of these farms and things, and then I created a few forts and factories and built up a big army. And then I used that to take it off the rebels that were here. So now I control this planet. I've done the same here with uh, Criticorum too. But then there was another one that I actually just colonize myself i think it's malignatus here this one here had no palace so i just came here and just colonized it myself completely um so yeah this is uh, this is like one that i've just completely colonized myself and i've just tried to find all the good resources on there you are constrained now one of the complaints i've seen people say about this game is that there's a lot the AI just spams out a lot of cities but that's how you have to play because in order to get more money you need more people and you need more by getting more people you have to build more cities and this, you need all of these cities because you need all these resources you have to I mean I've, I've got a bit of a stockpile here because I'm running out of food so I can't build too many units so I'm, these are kind of like just piling up but really you, you have to kind of start covering your cities like with with uh sorry covering, covering your plants with cities like look here on Kish I just started out with maybe just this many on this planet and a few more but now i've started building more and more and more because as i as i've needed bigger and bigger armies in order to fuel these wars that i'm in and there's look i've not even gone to icon really yet um and the other the other players are probably starting to get a foothold on some of these so there's wars all over the place it's just a really super tactical strategic game anyway i've spoken enough about this now i love emperor of the fading suns i think it's a fantastic game um i'm about to interview one of the developers from holistic design who was involved in the original game design a gentleman called alan greenberg who has been doing videos on this for uh, f uh for you know to kind of promote the game again and he seems like a really cool interesting guy so uh yeah he's agreed to come on explominate and i'm going to interview him and i'm going to try and do that in the next few weeks i want to finish a game of this first i think uh there's no hurry to get the interview done i, I think what i'd rather do is i'd rather know the game really well so I can sort of talk to him about it a little bit more sort of like, you know, authoritatively because I didn't really play this very often before the extended version came out last week. This is the furthest I've got into a game, but I'm, I feel like I think if I can win this war, I think I'm, I'm on track for victory. I think, but I'll be interested to see how the AI reacts once I've got a controlling share. You might find that they all, they all declare war on me and then I'm going to have a real fight on my hands. So... Yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's really, really cool. It's a really, really interesting game. It's got like loads of cool lore. The whole thing's based on an RPG that was based, built at the same time. Uh, Andrew Greenberg actually was one of the original uh, writers and developers of Vampire the Masquerade, the original RPG, and um, and uh, Werewolf as well. So I think you know he worked for White Wolf. So that's uh, he's got a real pedigree of game design. So I'm excited about that. All right, folks. Well, uh, and I'm going to show you the other game I'm playing. Okay, folks, and I've still not got any music for Mega Mech yet. Um, I'm working on that at the moment, but yeah, this is uh, this is Mega Mech, and um, this is the other game that has been taking my attention. I this is a, this is just basically tabletop battle tech, except an interface for playing it against a computer or against other players. You and um, I've now got the uh, the very latest version, which has got some nice improvements to. You can kind of change the. Oh, how do I do it? Control plus, I think, or oh, Shift plus. Anyway, you can change the size of the user interface. Control plus. There we go. So we can actually change the. You, we can actually change all sorts of stuff here, and just kind of make the game a little bit sort of easier to see for people, um, particularly with the combat resolution. So um, I think I did a video that ended up ended up being like two hours long, and I didn't really intend that to happen. 
I just got carried away with playing it and then it ended up, I instead of doing it in like multiple episodes, I just ended up playing it through. But yeah, this is um, this is a fantastic tactics game. That uh, There's also a campaign mode that you can play using uh, a piece of software called Mech HQ and it's way more complex than any of the other for example, I've got Mech Warrior Five Mercenaries, and that's like an action game, but it's still, you know, in the Battletech universe. And the campaign works very similarly. You know, you you have a bunch of mechs, you go from job to job, you earn C bills, uh, credits for you know doing jobs, and then you you salvage mechs. You have to pay for any repairs and any destroyed mechs, all that kind of stuff, and then you just kind of try and survive in the world and keep doing jobs and getting more and more interesting mechs, more and more interesting situations. But seriously, right? This game is this game is so good. This is um my favorite. I mean, look, it's a tabletop board game. This is what this is. But I'm gonna just call it a tactics game because that's what it is. It's it's just the best tactics game I played for a long time. There's only really Jagged Alliance two that I like as much as this. I'd say. Um, so yeah, this is this is my other thing that's taking my time, and I've actually written. This is a scenario that I'm working on at the moment, and I want to kind of, I'm kind of showing. I'm, there's no real spoilers here, but I'm just kind of showing it off. This is a scenario that I'm working on where I've kind of come up with a little storyline, and I've bu- I've got a bunch of characters, and I'm actually going to make a thing of it rather than just playing it as a tactics game. I'm actually going to you know introduce some to some characters and write a little some fluff for it, and I'm you know I've got some music on the way to play in the background. So this is like a, a mission that they're going that these this team are going to be going into, and it's a combined arms thing as well. There's not just battle mechs in this one. We've actually got infantry. We've got um, we've got combined arms stuff like the LRM carrier here. Um, there's like the v- uh, VTOL stuff. So we've got a warrior helicopter. Um, there'll be artillery in the game. There's like t- gun turrets. This is like the proper job. You don't see this stuff in HBS Battletech, all right? There's things like aircraft strikes. Off, off map artillery um there is drop ships you've got buildings to destroy and defend uh there is like stealth mechanics there's all sorts of options and basically all the rules from battletech and more and i mean all of the rule books in battletech too so yeah this is this is the game this is the one like this is my favorite game at the moment and it's just so good um, with all the RPG stuff is in there because it's this is an RPG as well as much as a war game, right? So th- there's with all the war the war games, sorry, with all the RPG stuff in there and all the fluff, um, this is just so good because BattleTech's a really cool space opera as well, just like Emperor of the Fading Suns. I mean, that's really special. But this one, I mean, you know, the, the fluff in BattleTech is pretty cool, at least the early stuff, right? So um, yeah, I'm going to be playing this too. And um, I don't know how long it's going to take me. This is not something I'm, I'm keen to rush out. I might just play the odd tactical battle here and there, but the actual like scripted stuff that I want to do, where I'm you know making a scripted game and then kind of really hyping it up and playing it and then just seeing sort of maybe you know building a story from there. That I, I'm not going to rush that out. I just want to make that right. I want it to be good. So I'm, I'm playing this scenario over and over just to try to make sure that it's challenging and it is challenging. I've lost it several times. I think I've kind of nearly won once, but I've lost it about three or four times. So I'm trying to make it really, really difficult. And I want it so that I can really show off the tactical nuance in this game, because it's not just run run at each other with mechs and, you know, like in MechWarrior, where you kind of just circle around one another until people just are destroyed. It's, it's really not like that. There's You've got to use tactics in this game and you've got to use strategy. You've got to have a plan. You've got to stick to it. So, um, and the and the AI is quite competent. I mean, you know, when I say that, I mean it's very competent. The only thing it's not very good at apparently is using infantry. Uh, and I and I found it does use infantry, and it, I think it's just placing infantry. It's not quite sure about. But other than that, the bot's pretty good. And I know people who like playing this as well. So there's a couple of guys on my on my Discord channel who who. Uh, you know, I know would probably be up for playing against me. You know, like in some games, if you if you want to see what it's like against a, a very competent human player as well. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's the three games I'm playing at the moment, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to kind of like sit and talk about games a little bit. You know, like you know me, I like talking and I like talking about games. And uh, yeah, like let me know what you think about these game choices in the comments. There are other things that I'm thinking about playing. I've I've talked about before. One of them is. Uh, X Pirates. The problem is with X Pirates is it's a very very long game. Like Emperor of the Fading Suns is a long game, but if you imagine that times by twenty, that's how long X Pirates is. So 
I don't think I would ever finish a game of X Pirates, and that's one of the things that's making me a little bit reluctant to play it um, online. Because sorry, at least on 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 a video, because I think you know, come episode three hundred, are you all still going to be watching it? Maybe I don't know, but maybe not. So, and I don't know if I can really commit to it. It's just so big. However, it is an amazing game. Like uh, again, tactics wise, tactics games wise, it's so fun. And it's so fun because there's just so much content in it. Like, there's so much content. And there's, like, th- literally thousands of technologies to research in that game. And all of them do something. <laughs> so there's, like, hundreds and hundreds of weapons. It's got more content than Dominions at this point, which is saying something. So, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd, maybe I'll just play a few battles from uh, from X Pirates, just kind of show it off a little bit. Uh, the other game I wanted to play at some point was Jagged Alliance 2 v 1.13. That's another quite long game um something's stopping me playing that i'm not really sure what it is i think it might just be that i know i, t- I like it i really really like it for the, like the first 10 15 hours and then i kind of tail off because i i kind of like it so much i kind of wear myself out with it so uh but I, yeah that is something i would like to play eventually at the moment i'm just a bit too busy and i can't do like too many things at once finally just before i go Go over to Explorminate and check out the Imperium's Greek Wars series that I'm about to put up. I've started one, but I'm gonna. I've actually had a lesson from Pavel, the developer, who showed me a load of cool stuff for the user interface that I was missing. And man, Imperium's Imperium's Greek Wars is such a good game. Uh, it's rapidly becoming one of my favorite Forex games. So, uh, yeah, check that one out too. All right, folks, I'm gonna go. I will catch you next time. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, and you know, what do you think about these games? Do you have any suggestions for me uh, to have a look at games? Uh, just a proviso. I'm happy for people to suggest stuff, but it doesn't mean I'm actually going to play it. Okay. <laughs> so, but like, I'm, I am interested to hear what games you think that I might be interested in. That I might, you know, want to have a look at. I, w- I will definitely take a look at everything that you suggest. Okay, folks, take care. I'll catch you next time.